Today's episode is exploring a neurological condition that affects about 4% of the population. I'm not here to cast any judgment on anyone or the way they perceive the world, only to explore the topic and discuss its effects from an unbiased perspective. However you experience the world is great, and whether or not you turn those experiences into something else is up to you. With that out of the way, let's get into it. So, what exactly is this mixing of the senses? The term that describes this kind of experience is synesthesia, which is a fancy science word that refers to a secondary sensation that accompanies a sensory reaction, or put more simply, when one of your senses reacts to another sense. When learning the alphabet, children are commonly taught to associate the letter A with an, often read, apple. But what if any time you saw the letter A, you also experienced that red color? Or as musician Adam Neely put it, I don't sense anything different about this A than you do. I do, however, have a strongly colored concept of A. This is known as grapheme color synesthesia. Grapheme being a fancy word which here means the smallest unit of a writing system, like a number or a letter, which would make grapheme color synesthesia a fancy phrase that refers to experiencing colors accompanying letters and numbers. For people like Adam, a page of fives and twos might look something like a field of blue and orange, with the different numbers jumping out due to the colors they're associated with. And that's just one form of synesthesia. There are at least 73 reported forms possibly more. The key thing that defines synesthesia is that these sensory connections are involuntary and automatic. When one of the connected senses is activated, the other turns on too. Synesthesia is defined as a neurological condition, not a disability because, put simply, there's nothing wrong. Sure, some synesthetes, a term for a person who has synesthesia, might have negative reactions to certain sensations, but in the same way that you may dislike the taste of something you eat, or dislike the scent of something you see. Smell. I, I mean smell. All the same. Just because we might find our senses distracting doesn't mean that we want to lose them. Could you imagine wanting to lose our sight just because of the things we've seen? Not even I want that. And I have seen things. But, in all my time, I haven't seen anything quite like our first case today. James Wannerton is an artist from the United Kingdom who also happens to have a rare form of synesthesia which links his sense of hearing with taste. The scientific phrase for this is lexical gustatory, or word taste in English. It's one of the rarest known forms of synesthesia, and means that he can taste the words around him. Or, in James' own words, Every sound I hear, especially word sounds, comes with an involuntary taste and texture experience attached. James has described the sensation like an eyedropper of flavors on his tongue, appearing in a flash with each new word before fading away, though it's a bit more than just a taste. This is a real mouthfeel, and not just a simple association. If I hear my dog bark, I experience the taste and texture of runny custard in my mouth. James's map is the culmination of his work mapping out the different tastes he's experienced riding the train through the London Underground, London subway system. As a child, James took the tube, as the locals call it, to school and remembers the whine of the trains causing a strong taste of rhubarb. Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> Since then, he's traveled through every stop on the system and kept notes on what the sound of each tasted like. James completed his map in 2013, which includes delicious sounding flavors like fresh peach and apple crumble, alongside the more bizarre boiled egg and chocolate, and downright disgusting ones like putrid meat. Ugh. As you may have guessed by some of those flavors, there are certain downsides to this particular form of synesthesia, namely, how distracting it can be. According to James, it's quite difficult to travel anywhere because you get bombarded with tastes every time you read a road sign. Reading itself is problematic. I have to speed read. There's no way I can read each word and take it all in. Still, it's not something that James would want to have taken away. When asked if he would like to take part in a test on removing synesthesia for 20 minutes, he turned it down. I wouldn't have it, have it taken away, and it's a question I've asked synesthesia through the years myself, and I've come across maybe one or two who find it that intrusive that they wouldn't mind a rest from it. Here's a question for you. What does your favorite song look like? There's a few ways to answer this one. An album cover, sound wave, a music video. Personally, I think my favorite song looks a little like this.
Hello, Tchaikovsky. Using cannons as an instrument? You scoundrel. What can I say, bro? Once I can on, I cannot can off. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, you like it? It's very oh, good. Oh, that, that's yes. good. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm hearing voices now. That's, yes. yeah, that's, that's cool. But how about something like this? Melissa McCracken is an artist from Kansas City who paints the songs that she hears to create stunning color clouds, visualizing the tones and instruments of music on canvas. Melissa has three forms of synesthesia. The first form we've covered already, color grapheme, associating letters with colors. The second form is known as spatial sequence, where numbers and dates are associated with a physical space. The form of synesthesia that lends the color to Melissa's art is known as chromesthesia, or sound color synesthesia. To her, jazz music may include blues and whites. Jimi Hendrix's guitar riffs are gold, and pop songs contain bright pinks and purples. Like James, Melissa originally thought this was something that everyone experienced, which was only challenged when she found the perfect ringtone for her new blue slider phone. Uh, for you younger viewers, slider phones are what ancient civilizations used to send cat pictures to each other. They're like smartphones, but worse in every way. Except the sliding bit. That's really fun. So I turned to my friend and I said, yes, this song is perfect. It's orange, it matches my blue phone perfectly. And confused, he said, wait, what do you mean it matches? While at first she felt confused and alone, Melissa soon realized she was anything but. Which brings us to... <laughs> Yay, oh, this is good. Look at them go. Who taught them? Billie Eilish made waves at the age of 15 when she released the song Ocean Eyes on SoundCloud in 2016. Since then, her songs are now heard by millions every day. Now, I can't speak for all of the reasons why Billie Eilish exploded in popularity. I'm not from the music biz, so don't call my people. I don't have any. Hello, darkness, my old friend. But one thing that even I can tell is that her songs have a unique sound to them, and that's no accident. Billy describes the creation process she and her brother use to make songs as a visual one. I think visually first with everything I do. With every song comes a color, a landscape, a visual. Billy's zanny is meant to be disorienting, sounding the way that secondhand smoke looks and feels. So, while Billy hasn't named the form of synesthesia she has, we can make some connections. Her desire to put the look and feel of substances into music indicate an overlap between vision, touch, and sound. And based on comments describing Bury a Friend as being dark colors, she may have chromesthesia. Billy has even given us a look into her mind, both with snippets of her notebook where she draws the way her songs sound, and with the release event of her album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? This event was a full-blown exhibition, bringing attendees into Billy's mind with rooms tailored to have certain feels and looks. Bright green walls, smoke and subwoofers under the floor, and even one room that included actual puppies. This isn't unusual in musicians. Pharrell Williams has talked about synesthesia in interviews, and Lord has previously described how she sees her songs in colors, describing the look of her album Melodrama as the blues and violets featured prominently in its album's art. In terms of how that affects her work, Lord described it as, From the moment I start something, I can see the finished song, even if it's far off and foggy. It's about getting the actual thing to sound like what I've been seeing. So when an artist can pour a full sensory experience into a song, is it any wonder that we find it captivating? It's more than just a song. It's a combined experience for them, shared with us. And when shared with us, we can experience it too. In a test, Professor Jamie Ward of the University of Sussex found that when presented with a song and a set of images, people preferred images created by synesthetes when asked which image represented the song. In fact, it's believed that at one point we may have all had our senses linked in this way, specifically when we were infants and our brains were just forming. In an article for The Psychologist, Professor Ward noted that everyone engages in perception across two senses. Watching this video involves sight and sound, for example. Even though my voice is coming from your speech, speakers or headset. It looks like it's coming from my mouth. There have even been recorded cases of acquired synesthesia, which implies that these sensory connections may just be unused for all us non-synesthetes. But why do synesthetes seem to skew towards creativity? Well, as American Synesthesia Association co-founder Carol Steen put it, if you were surrounded by color all of your life and it really thrilled you, wouldn't you want more of it? 
But if you want something a bit more scientific, yay, science! According to Dr. V. S. Ramachandran of the University of California at San Diego, if you assume that this greater cross wiring in concepts also in different parts of the brain than those just where synesthesia occurs, then it's going to create a greater propensity towards metaphorical thinking and creativity in people with synesthesia, and, hence, the eight times more common incidence of synesthesia among poets, artists, and novelists. How does Billie Eilish make songs that feel like velvet? Well, simply put, it's because that's how she feels them, and she uses her perception of sound to try and share that experience with us. And, at the end of the day, I think that's pretty 